Well, it's amnesty for me because the first duty of any citizen is obey the law. These people already failed to obey the law. They already failed. So if an American citizen of a legal immigrant like I was uh, uh, engaged in the same behavior, these people we finish in jail or deported. So uh, you use the word back of the line. I think the back of the line for every person who is illegal in the country is outside the country because there are people waiting outside to come legally and they don't find a way and they don't come. They respect the law, they stay outside. So the back of the line for people who are in the country illegally is outside the country. We give a million, a million uh, uh, citizenship every year. We have 20 million Americans unemployed. Uh, we have a big problem with welfare. We have people jumping from planes with, and skydiving into Lexington, Kentucky and uh, running, you know, getting pregnant and running for welfare and the government is paying, well, the government is not paying, the taxpayer is paying because the government don't have money. Uh, they are paying for, for, for all the fees for the dentists after we pay for, 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 the, for all the attention in the hospital. We give citizenship to that kid. Uh, so until we don't solve all these problems, people running for welfare, People coming here, uh, flying from other countries just to have their babies, to abuse our 14th Amendment, until we don't, do, do, we don't secure the border, it's still an amnesty. It is an amnesty. When we're talking, the, the whole notion of these individuals broke the law, you've said it before on the show, a, yeah. a number of individuals who are undocumented came here lawfully. I give you the example of my friend Maria Rojas in mm -hmm. Northern Kentucky. She's a student at NKU. Yeah. She came here legally, her family from Chile. Her father's a jockey, mm. so as you can imagine, Kentucky was an excellent choice for them. They made a home here, um, they loved Kentucky, and they wanted to stay here in the state, so they applied for permanent residency. Now, unfortunately, this is all too common, their lawyer was a scam artist. She took all of their money, and they were left with nothing, and they fell out of status, and they were undocumented. They were undocumented for around 10 years, still living, working, paying taxes here in Kentucky, before they were able to apply again. And they did apply. And fortunately, for the majority of her family, they were able to get status. Now, they're permanently separated at this point from their father, who is in Chile. But her family's here. So this is an individual who is in status at first, out of status, and then back into status. And it illustrates that the law is broken. And I'll tell you what, this isn't the first time that we've got it wrong when it comes to laws. I mean, when my mom was a young a child, she went to school in segregated classrooms. Sometimes. We get it wrong as Americans, and the truth is that's why we have democracy, mm -hmm. and that's why we go and vote every couple of exactly. years, and so I'd that like we can fix these sorts mm -hmm. of problems. And I'd just like to mention, just kind of piggybacking what Kate said, there are laws that we've gotten wrong in this country. Very specifically, we've gotten our immigration laws wrong. The first immigration law was enacted in 1790 to make sure that the only people that came to this country were free white men. You would not be allowed here. Mm -hmm. I would not be allowed here. Women were not allowed here. There have been waves, ebbs and waves, of basically immigrants that we wanted, and then we immediately said, we don't want you. The Chinese immigrants, they came here. We opened them. We welcomed them with open arms with the Homestead Act. Immediately, less than 20 years later, they're suddenly criminals. They're undesirables. We don't want them. Get them out of here. They're criminals. They're breaking the law because now we've said, we don't want you here, and that's the law. Germans, Poles, immig Irish people, I mean, Southern Catholic, it's just, it goes on and on. We want you here, we don't want you here anymore. So when you're talking about respect the law, mm -hmm. I would ask you, which law were you trying to respect? The ones that suddenly said, women are allowed now, black people are allowed, minorities are allowed, I will Catholics say the law, are allowed. I would say the law is, uh, is in place when you come in. If you come in and, and when you come in through the border, they stamp a six months stamp and you overstay your visa and you are a lawyer, you know you become a legal alien. You don't become an undocumented immigrant. If I get a, into a plane and jump into, I don't know, Russia with a parachute, I'm an immigrant. If you find your neighbor in your house coming and uh, barbecuing in your, in your yard without your authorization, he's a guest or a trespasser. That's the question I'm saying. Uh, of course, I'm an immigrant. And uh, there are a lot of people outside America, they're respecting the law and waiting to come, and, and these people are taking their place. That's yeah, I'd like to if point out again, as an attorney, that they are not taking their place. Nothing happens yes, without the people that have already begun the process. Nothing happens until they get their, their green card. So that's just well, completely they're, wrong. They're living here, and they're I'd working like here, just, they're living the American dream here they get work without having the authorization to be here. They get work authorization depending on their status. If you're a refugee, or an asylum, no, no, you I'm get work authorization. I'm talking about illegal aliens. I'm not talking about immigrants. Some, they, they, that's something insulting when you mix everybody in the same bag. It, it is two different things. I it, agree. It, it, is, it is two different status. And you're talking about here about people who are here illegally, who came here illegally. We didn't bring them, and suddenly we didn't want them here. 
And if you come with a tourist visa, you come with a B2 visa or an HB1 visa, and your time is two years, you don't leave, it's not the government problem, or it's not the taxpayer problem, and it's not a society problem. So you are trying to blame the society to and pushing the American society to take a decision they don't want to take right now. That's a reality. Mr. Gettle. Well, um, if, if we've got our immigration laws wrong virtually every country, as we've got some of uh, probably the most lax laws uh, in the world regarding immigration, I mean, you wouldn't be doing, you, you wouldn't go over the uh, Mexican border illegally and expect to be treated in Mexico the way we treat um, uh, Mexicans who are coming across the border illegally in this country. So. Um, I think that's a false equivalence to say, well, we used to not let women vote, therefore we should uh, let people who came across the border illegally stay without any um, ramifications to their actions. But in defense of uh, my good friends here, uh, to my right, although politically to my left, I think. Nonpartisan, ACLU. Uh, Nonpartisan. Non um, <laughs> that uh, this legislation does put some significant penalties in for those issues. I think the bigger issue, though, is really the economics of it. Since the recession ended in June of 2009, that's the official, we have record numbers of people living in poverty. We have record numbers of people on food stamps. We have record numbers of people on welfare, on disability, record low workforce uh, participation. On, less than 64 percent of adults in America are working to support the rest of the population. We have the largest gap between uh, the rich and the poor since the 1920s. And the problem is, regarding humanitarian and feeling sorry for the people that are here, uh, that came here illegally and wanting to send them back, is we can't take care of who we've got now. We can't, we are having more and more people going into poverty, and so you're adding to that population, you're going to have even more in poverty, and we can't afford that now.